In the following video, we're going to continue our examination of linear programming. We're going to focus primarily on our application problems. So let's start with the first example. Todd has just finished writing a research paper. A type is charged as $3.50 per page if no charts are used. So I'm going to do some color coding with marking important information. So it looks like $3.50 per page if no charts are used is important. $8 per page if a chart appears on the page. Todd knows there will be at most 40 pages having no charts. So for no charts, I used blue. So at most 40 pages having no charts. There will be no more than 16 pages with charts. So that would be green. And the paper will be 50 pages or less. So that's that's something new. So let's just underline that one. So those look like my important information. Now in this example, it's kind of our introduction example. I broke everything down in parts. Each step that is required to solve an application problem for linear programming. And so the first part says write inequalities that limit the number of plain pages to be typed. So if I take a look, plain pages are pages that have no chart. And so that was what I underlined the information involving plain pages in blue, the ones with no chart. Well, I want to limit the number of pages. The information that involves no charts are dollars per page. That's not a limit for the number of pages. It looks like I should be focusing here at most 40 pages having no charts. So let's let this be our x. Let's let and we'll define it like we have been. Let's let x be the plain pages, the number of plain pages, and let's let y be the number of pages that actually have charts. And so for this, the number of plain pages at most is 40. So that means the number of plain pages has to be less than or equal to 40. But there's something else we have to consider. If we were to think about all the numbers that are less than or equal to 40, you know, you would go all the way down the number line. So you'd go to 30 to 20 to 10 to 0, and then you'd start going into the negatives. And you can't have a negative number of pages on, well, in a paper. And so what we have to do is we have to create that left side boundary. I mean, the least amount of pages to have no charts on it would be 0. You know, you can't go beyond it. So my first inequality is my x is between 0 and 40, including those. And so let's look at the second one. Write inequalities that limits the number of pages with charts. And so the ones with charts, I underline all that information in green. So $8 per page, and that's not limiting the number of pages. Come down here no more than 16 pages with charts. So that's the important information. And so y is the variable I'll use for charts. And so my y value, no more than 16, so it has to be less than or equal to 16. But we also have the other idea. You know, less than 16 goes down 15, 14, 3, 2, 1, 0, and goes all the way into the negatives and you can't have a negative number of pages. So we have to put our left boundary of zero. So our number of plain pages is between zero and 40, and our number of pages with charge is between zero and 16. Now let's look at part C. Write an inequality that expresses the total number of pages to be prepared. And so if I take a look at this, where do I think I have my total information? Here's cost, here's cost. We already took care of this. We already took care of this. So I kind of cross them out with the colors. Here, the paper will be 50 pages or less. And the paper consists of plain pages and pages with charts. So my paper, and so I said I would color code, so I'll use black for this one has to be 50 pages or less. So my paper must be less than or equal to 50 pages. Well, what type of pages make up my paper? 
and the number the types of pages that make up our paper are the ones with no charts our plain pages and the ones with charts and so our plain pages is our x our chart pages are our y so the number of plain pages plus the number of pages with charts equal our total and so that is our third inequality and so what we're asked next to do is to draw a graph showing the feasible regions. So we have our three inequalities. And we are going to graph these on the grid provided. So let me take my three inequalities. We'll shrink them down so we can get them in our graph. And for our graph, we first will graph our x is between 0 and 40. So remember, x would be vertical lines. These are solid vertical lines. So you have a vertical line through 0, and you have a vertical line through 40. And so our x is located between those. And I said I would use color coding. So I'm going to use blue for these. And so I'm just going to lightly shade in between. Remember, I again use a pencil. That way we can erase and focus on our feasible region. And the next one says our y value is between 0 and 16. So here's 0 on the y axis. Here's 16 on the y axis. Our y is between those. So then I'm going to shade between those two horizontal lines. And so far I see that somewhere in this rectangular region is my feasible region. So like I've been doing, I'm going to erase the other part so my eyes can focus on the solution region being there. And the last one, x plus y is less than or equal to 50. Now we can convert this to slope intercept form you know, by subtracting x from both sides, and you would get, and I'll put in parentheses, y is less than or equal to negative x plus 50. But if you were to try and graph that, you would see you'd have a y intercept of 50, which is right here. You'd have to go down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. It's a little hard to just follow that pattern. It takes a long time. And so we kind of learned this when we were dealing with equations and inequalities of story problems is if you have something that involves large numbers and your intervals on your graph are unique then what you can do is kind of apply the idea of x-intercept and y-intercept to make your life a little bit easier and so if i were to and i'll keep this so you can see the slope intercept form but if i were to do the x-intercept and y-intercept approach you know to find the x-intercept you cover up the y term, you know, and solve x is going to be 50. Cover up the x term and solve for your y, and your y-intercept is 50. Which that's a lot easier because then I can just mark my x-intercept of 50 and mark my y-intercept of 50. So mark my x-intercept here, mark my y-intercept here and then just connect them with my line. Now, I said I'm going to color code, but seeing how my lines are in black, my grid is in gray, I'm going to use purple in order to do the color coding. It says your equation is less than or equal to, and so you're going to shade under this line. And so the whole idea is to look for where all three colors intersect and that is your feasible region. And so I see it, it's in this area right here. So I'm going to erase the other purple shading. And this is my solution region. So let's highlight it like we've been doing. Make sure it comes down here. Leave that triangular region up here unshaded. Comes across up and then we'll shade inside 
And so this is my feasible region. So now let's see what it says, list the vertices. And so this is very similar to what we've been doing before when it came to finding our vertices of our systems and inequalities or finding our vertices of just linear programming, not story problem ones. You know, where are our vertices here? And so I see a first one here is 0, 16. I see the next one here is 0, 0. Come up, I see this one is going to be 34, 16. This one is going to be 40, looks like 10. And this one is going to be 40, 0. And so I'm going to list these vertices. So let me just write them here. So we can have a quick reference for part F. So 0, 0. I have 0, 16. I have 34, 16. I have 40, 10. And I have 40, 0. Now, part F says write a function to represent the cost of a typist. And so now I want to go up to my story problem and I want to find the information that relates to cost. And so if I go up, I see the cost a typist charges $3.50 per page if no charts are used and eight dollars per page if a chart is used and so this function is what we've been doing in previous examples in the previous video you know our f of x y we're told it costs three dollars and fifty cents for each plain page so that was our x and it costs eight dollars for every chart page, which is our Y. So our function is $3.50 for each plant page plus $8 for each page with a chart. And if you want, I can make it so we don't need all the zeros to say 3.5X plus 8Y. And that way, when we plug in to this function to figure out our max or min, we know it's less work with all the numbers there. So create a table to find which type of research paper will cost the most to type. And so this is where we take our function. We are going to plug in our information based off of what our vertices are. So let me grab the vertices. And we are going to plug in each vertex and figure out it says the most. And so that means we are looking for our max. So let's just start plugging in each one. So we'll just do it the same way we did before. Our function at the coordinate 0, 0 is going to be 3.5 times 0 plus 8 times 0. And this should make sense. I mean, the coordinate 0, 0 means there's 0 plane pages and 0 chart pages. So it should cost $0. Um, 0, 016, so the function at the coordinate 0, 016 is 3.5 times 0 plus 8 times 16. Well, 3.5 times 0 is 0, and 8 times 16 is 128, so 0 plus 128 is 128. And so we keep on going. Three more vertices to plug in. Now we have 34, 16. So the function at the coordinate 34, 16 is 3.5 times 34 plus 8 times 16. Now we saw before 8 times 16 is 128. And next I am going to do 34 times, which gives me 119. And so if you do 119 plus 128, 
you get 247. Now we'll do the function at the coordinate 4010. So you do 3.5 times 40 plus 8 times 10. And so 8 times 10 is 80. And then you do 3.5 times 40, which is going to be 140. And that gives you 220. So, so far we plugged in four out of our five vertices. Give myself some more room to do the last one, which is the vertex 40, zero. So our function at the coordinate 40, zero would be 3.5 times 40 and eight times zero. So if he has zero char pages, he'll be charge zero dollars and we saw 3.5 times 40 is 140. So zero plus 140 is 140. And so here are all the values of our function. Now we're asked the most. We're asked to find the max. And so if I take a look at my information, 0, 128, 247, 220, and 140, it looks like this function at the vertex 34, 16 was actually my max. So which type of research paper will cost the most? 34 was our X, and that's the number of plain pages. 16 was our Y, and that's the number of charts. And that will cost two hundred forty seven dollars and so this is my answer so it's very similar to what we've previously done with linear programming it's just now we have to keep in context what our variables represent x being the number of plane pages and y being the number of charts and so when we figure out our max or if we were asked to figure out our min then you would just refer back to those units, those labels for your final answer.